हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू बेस्ट चैटिंग चैनल प्लीज लाइक कमेंट एंड सब्सक्राइब दिस चैनल थैंक यू हेलो एंड कंग्रेचुलेशंस ऑन गेटिंग एक्सेस टू दिस वीडियो कोर्स ऑन ऑन पेज एसईओ फॉर वर्कप्रेस साइट्स दिस इज वीडियो नंबर 1 एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट व्हाट्स इनसाइड दिस वीडियो कोर्स Now before we do that and before I give you a quick overview what I want to do is talk about mindset because I'm a big believer that if you're in the wrong mindset then even if you have this video course even if you try to implement a few things it's ultimately going to hold you back and I've seen this time and time again this specific mindset that I'm about to talk about holds business owners back and we don't want to see that happen to you. We want to see you succeed as much as possible. Here is the mindset. The mindset is that people make the assumption that every single SEO technique and rule changes rapidly so that what worked 15 years ago doesn't work now. Now, I will say a large majority, yes, it's true that search engine optimization does change rapidly. every single month. Now, at the same time, and yes, that is true to a certain extent, but there are basic fundamentals that Google and other search engines look for that still hold true today. That still work today. So, well, let me repeat that. Not everything has changed. It might have changed slightly. But if you get into that mindset of oh everything changes, you know, everything that used to work 10 years ago doesn't work now, then you're putting yourself in a dangerous position simply because you will forget the basics. Now, there are a lot of basic fundamental SEO rules, but we're really going to focus on five factors and I'll talk more about that later down the road. So we're going to be focusing on these factors that haven't changed or if they have changed they've only changed very very slightly in the last decade. So make sure that you're not in this mindset otherwise it will prevent you from actually moving forward. So here's a quick overview of what's inside this video course. Of course this is video number 1 which is the introduction. Video number 2 is going to be the main focus. So We're going to make sure that you have a clear view of what we're going to talk about. Video number 3, we're going to talk about five important factors that you definitely should implement in your WordPress site. Video number 4, we're going to talk about the URL structure such as what should your domain look like, what should the URL look like, and all of that. Video number 5, we're going to talk about body, text, structure video number 6 we're going to talk about image optimization and basically how to make your images more search engine friendly video number 7 we're going to talk about title optimization and how long your title should be video number 8 we'll talk about metadata optimization and how that can affect what text and what information will show up on the search engines And of course last but not least this is sort of a bonus but in video number 9 I'm going to talk about the top 2 WordPress plugins that we highly recommend that you install. So once you understand these five important factors and you've actually implemented them yourself, then you can actually automate things, but automating things doesn't really help you in the long run. It's sort of like a shortcut. Without understanding the basics and the fundamentals, you're actually hurting yourself. you're not really going to know why you're ranking all right so here's what you're going to need you're going to need to have a wordpress site if you don't have a wordpress site these uh, fundamentals still hold true as well but most of what i'm going to be showing you is how to implement these five factors into your wordpress site you're also going to need to have a general idea of what the general keyword is that you want to rank on. And then of course you want to have a list of specific keywords related to that general keyword. And the reason why you need to have these in hand is because you're going to use these in your body tags, your title tags, your metadata tags, and even your image alt tag tags. 
So you're also going to need access to content, written text and or images to create your post. Now, if you don't have all this information right now, that's fine, but you're, you're definitely going to need it eventually. So with that said, let's move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. And in this video, we're going to talk about the main focus so that you have a better clear view of what we're going to talk about in this video course. You see, because on page SEO is such a broad term that literally covers a lot of areas of your website, both the front end, such as the text, the content and all of that, and the back end, like sitemaps, the XML sitemap and all of that. Really the main focus of this course is to help you make your front end of your WordPress site more SEO friendly. And what that means is we're going to focus specifically on how to make your overall WordPress site structure, your posts, your pages, more search engine friendly. So the goal is that when Google and other search engine robots come to your site, they will know what your site is all about. Now, by robot, what I mean by that is that Google usually will send out computers, which are called bots, and they'll come and scan your website and try to figure out what your site is all about. Now, the truth of the matter is that too many people skip over this because it isn't exciting. They are too focused on external SEO, but the reality is that there are a lot of front end factors that you must do on all of your sites. So by skipping out on these fundamental steps and just focusing on things like backlinking, you're really going to miss out on a lot because when Google comes to your site, if your site is not search engine friendly and you've just got a lot of backlinks, then yes, you do have a lot of votes that your site might be good. But at the same time, it's like, okay, this, this is a popular site, but what is this site all about? That is the goal of this course. Even though that seems basic, it's very often much of a skipped step. So once you get in the habit of doing the following and implementing these five factors, you'll actually be ahead of most of your competitors. So the good news is that most people don't do this. So the fact that no, most people don't do this and you're doing this, you're going to get ahead of them. Now, to clarify what this isn't, however, we're not going to focus on backlinking or any external marketing strategies, which is what I talked about earlier. So now that you have a clear idea of what we're going to talk about, let's move on to video number three and discuss the five important factors that all of your posts, your pages, your content, your text, your URL structures and everything else should contain. Hello and welcome to video number three. And we're going to talk about the five important factors. Now, this is a quick overview of the five factors. And then of course, the next few videos, I'll dive in to every single one of these factors. But before we can really discuss them in depth, you need to have a broader bird's eye view of them. So before we jump into the five factors that your WordPress sites should have, or even your non WordPress sites should have, which they'll definitely work on those too. It's important to know a few things first. So you're going to need to have a general idea of number one, the general keyword that you're going to want to rank on. And number two, a list of specific keywords that branch off of that main keyword. Now don't worry if you don't have that now, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step technique that will help you figure that out. Now, another big mistake that many folks make is implementing these without a clear plan of attack. And that's why I'm breaking things down in such a manner. There's a reason for everything. In fact, we've seen this with many websites. There's no clear plan and the website owner simply creates content in an area with little or no traffic. And then they're not ranking on any specific keyword. They might even be ranking on keywords that have really nothing to do with their website. And this is a lot of time wasted, right? So that's why I'm not jumping straight head first. I'm breaking things down so that it becomes clear and that way you will succeed. 
Now, we're not going to focus, like I said, on keyword research, but we do recommend that you check out the suggested keywords. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Google has what we call suggested keywords. Amazon.com also has a list of suggested keywords. Now, this is what happens, and this is super easy. You can literally find the main keyword and a list of specific keywords within a few seconds. So here's what I want you to do. You can do this by going to google.com, for example, and typing in a general keyword. So you'll notice that when you do, Google will suggest keywords. Now, in order for the keywords to appear in the suggested box, that means that there's a ton, a ton of people that are searching for those keywords. So in other words, there's a high volume of people searching. So when I typed in the keyword survival kit, out dropped a dropdown saying, well, these are other Google suggested keywords like survival kit list, ideas, Amazon, food, and backpack. Now, there's another way of doing this. If you type in the keyword and you press enter, then what's going to happen and you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you're going to see a list of words. So if you scroll all the way down the bottom after you made that search, you're going to find additional keywords right here where I've put a red box here. So we can see additional keywords or things like military survival kits, survival kit list, best survival kit, survival kit food, items, wilderness survival kit. So we can see not only are there different keywords, but there are also different types of survival kits for different scenarios in different settings. So that gives us an idea of okay, we can write an article on survival, military survival kits or wilderness survival kits. So these could be totally different articles. So now that you have a basic understanding of basic keyword research, let's move on to the five important factors. And they are number one, the URL structure or the domain name and the category name, the file name, even the page name is important. And this is what shows up in the address bar at the very top. Whenever you go to any website, you see the domain name, the page name and all that in the search bar at the top. That is the URL structure. Now the URL structure is very important because it tells Google and other search engines, are you a brand? Are you a specific keyword? What is your website about? Now that's just one element. There's a, a lot of other elements as well. Number two, we have the body text structure, which contains basically everything on your post or your page in terms of content. So this contains both written text that you use in your post and pages. And there's more than just slapping a bunch of content for everyone to see. So there's a lot that goes into this. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to break things down. So you have a better idea of what you should include in your body text structure. Number three, we got image optimization. What this means is making your images more search engine friendly. So just like body text, when it comes to images, Google and other search engines are not going to know right off the bat what they are. So you need to do your best to help them figure out what the images are all about. Now, there are ways that Google will figure out eventually what your images are all about. So don't try to game the system. For example, if you name an image, let's say a wilderness survival kit, the way they figure out if that image is legit or not is oftentimes they'll rank you in the, the Google image search engine. If somebody types in, let's say wilderness survival kit and they see your image and they click that, they have a better idea that, okay, this is definitely an image of the wilderness survival kit. And that will actually help you in the long run. So don't try to game the system and name an image, something that it's not name it what it is so that it's an attracting image. And when somebody's looking for the image, they're going to find it, they're going to click it. And that's going to help you in the long run. In fact, beyond that, there's a few more steps you'll need to take. And plus, in addition to that, with the image search engine that I talked about just now, you can actually get a lot of traffic from that search engine.
And of course, we got factor number four, which is title optimization, basically how to make your titles search engine friendly, because the reality and the truth of the matter is that your titles do show up in the search engine. So you definitely need to do this right. Otherwise, you're going to attract the wrong person. Meta optimization is the same thing. You've got, you've got the description and other metadata that will show up underneath the title in the search engine. So you want to make sure that you attract the right person. Now that we've talked about the five important factors, let's dive into every single one of these five. Okay, welcome back. This is video number four, and we're going to talk about the URL structure. Now, this is something that has changed slightly in the last decade, but it hasn't changed drastically. Now, before we discuss what you should use in terms of a domain name and your URL structure, let's discuss why this is important. You see, when Google and other search engines try to figure out what your website is all about, they look at your website as a whole. They're not just going to look at your URL structure, your domain name, or your categories or your page name, they're going to look at everything as a whole. Plus, in addition to that, they're going to look at how people interact with your content and if it that that is true. Now, part of that is what appears in the URL. A search engine friendly URL structure can actually go a long way. Not only will it help the search engines figure out what your page is all about, it's also going to help a human visitor understand what the page is what. And that means that keywords still matter, but you have to be careful not to keyword stuff your URLs. And by keyword stuff, what I mean by that is you're putting too many of the same keywords in the same area. In other words, back in the day when Google started, for example, you literally could keyword stuff a page and get ranked really, really quick. But now Google has become much smarter. Their bots and intelligence have become smarter. So that's a big no, no, don't do that. And I'm going to show you in just a minute why, if you use certain domain names that can have a drastic impact on that. So let's talk about domain names. So what should you name your domain name? Should you use an exact match domain, meaning that the keyword is in the domain? Or should you use a brand name? Well, there's a big debate that using a keyword in the domain name will actually get you ranked higher. That actually worked back in the day. Sometimes it still works today. And there's really no right or wrong answer. Literally at the end of the day, we don't know. Nobody knows what Google wants. In fact, uh, what we found now is that there, there's so many exact match domains and so many people that are using keywords in their domain names that it actually might help and it might not. And that's why you need to make sure that you don't look at one element, but you look at the whole website as a whole. So yeah, that was quite popular. Maybe five years ago, something like this, your keyword.com. So maybe scuba diving masks.com. If you were trying to rank on scuba diving masks or best scuba diving masks or best survival kit.com. And that used to work and sometimes still does. So we can't really say for sure that if it doesn't, or it does, we've noticed that it does, but we really can't say, but if you haven't noticed, Google really likes brands, they love brands. And the reason why they love brands is because that's because brands are here to stay. If you look at a brand, it becomes a culture and it becomes, it's got a following. And that's why Google loves brands. Something like this, yourbrandname.com. Now Google is quite smart and has robots that know that people are trying to keyword stuff or game the system in terms of domain names or domains plus the URL structure. Now we've had success with brand names. So we lean towards that as a long-term view, but then again, exact match keyword domain names work well for some other people as well. So we can't say for sure that if, if it's not going to work. So at the end of the day, it's really up to you, but what I'm going to show you in just a minute will reveal to you why using a brand name will actually help you, especially in preventing you from creating duplicate or keyword stuffing in the URL structure. 
So the URL structure looks like this, www.yourdomain.com slash category slash your dash page dash name. And that could be anything depending on how you go about naming that. And I'll show you that in WordPress, but we're just talking about the basic fundamentals right now. So let's say, for example, that you're trying to rank on red shoes. The problem with naming your domain name redshoes.com is this. Let's say, for example, that you have a category that is red shoes, blue shoes, yellow shoes, brown shoes. But that one category that's red shoes and you have a product called Big Red Shoes, it ends up looking like this, www.redshoes.com slash red dash shoes slash big dash red dash shoes. So you see what I mean here? You've got red shoes, red shoes, and red shoes three times in a row. That's not a good sign because what that is is keyword stuffing. Now, this isn't good because it looks like you're trying to game the system when in reality you might not be. But let's say, for example, that your brand name is Super Fast Feet. And as silly as that sounds, that's something that just came to my mind and it'll make more sense. And the product name is Big Shoes. Now, I know that's not great, but hold on. It would look something like this, www.superfastfeet.com slash red dash shoes slash big dash shoes. So big shoes is a type of red shoes, but it belongs to the brand name super fast feet or the e-commerce store or the digital store or the local store. So by doing that now you see red shoes only shows up once. Now by using a brand name, you have the potential of selling other things. If you just do red shoes.com, you're, you're stuck with only red shoes, right? But with super fast feet, you could cover shoes, you could cover slippers, you could cover socks, you could cover a variety of different things. You could even cover lifestyle of running, exercise, and all of that. So brands, not only does it help you with your URL structure, but it also helps you diversify and expand what your website could potentially be about. Now, in this case, the word shoes shows up twice, but that's okay. Do you see what I mean here and why brands actually help you avoid keyword stuffing? Now, another tip is to make sure that your URL is no longer than 90 characters long. Okay, so first things first, go ahead and log into your WordPress site, as you can see here. And then what you wanna do is access the permalinks to make sure that your URL structure is search engine friendly. So what you need to do is to the left-hand side, go to settings, permalinks, and then we'll get to here. Now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to choose post name. Click post name, click save down here, and that's it. So what this is gonna do is every time you create a post in a page, it's gonna title the actual post and page and put it in the URL. You see, if you choose a numeric or if you choose anything like this, then when Google comes to your page, they're not necessarily going to know. They're gonna look for the body text, but the URL structure is, is by no means search engine friendly. So I can, as you can see here, the plain version is just question mark P equals one, two, three. As a human being as well, you don't really know what that is, right? So choose post name, click save, and that is the reason. Now, if you go on to a post or a page, so if you go to posts, and choose a post or a page, this is what it's gonna look like. So when you create a post and page, like for example, right here, this article here that says 10 different places to find credible freelancers online. If you have it here, you wanna make sure that that is in your permalink. Permalink is the URL structure. So we click on edit here. We can see that it says 10 different places to find credible freelancers online. So what you wanna do is, obviously we can't change the domain name, but we're gonna put the title in here and you wanna put dashes in between the words. And when you're done, click on okay, click update, and that's it. So that's as easy as it gets in terms of editing the URL structure. 
Now, of course, you can add them into categories. So if you're, you have a category, let's say in this case, we have freelancers. The category could be freelancing sites. And then you could have maybe 10 different posts on freelancing sites. So that as a human being, you know that we're looking at this and it's under the category of freelancing. And you can create categories by going under categories and click on add new category and creating that there. And then make sure that poster page is checked for that category, click update and you're good to go. And that's it. Okay, welcome back. This is video number four and we're gonna talk about the URL structure. Now, this is something that has changed slightly in the last decade, but it hasn't changed drastically. Now, before we discuss what you should use in terms of a domain name and your URL structure, let's discuss why this is important. You see, when Google and other search engines try to figure out what your website is all about, they look at your website as a whole. They're not just going to look at your URL structure, your domain name, or your categories or your page name, they're going to look at everything as a whole. Plus, in addition to that, they're going to look at how people interact with your content and if it that that is true. Now, part of that is what appears in the URL. A search engine friendly URL structure can actually go a long way. Not only will it help the search engines figure out what your page is all about, it's also going to help a human visitor understand what the page is what. And that means that keywords still matter, but you have to be careful not to keyword stuff your URLs. And by keyword stuff, what I mean by that is you're putting too many of the same keywords in the same area. In other words, back in the day when Google started, for example, you literally could keyword stuff a page and get ranked really, really quick. But now Google has become much smarter. Their bots and intelligence have become smarter. So that's a big no-no. Don't do that. And I'm going to show you in just a minute why if you use certain domain names, that can have a drastic impact on that. So let's talk about domain names. So what should you name your domain name? Should you use an exact match domain, meaning that the keyword is in the domain? Or should you use a brand name? Well, there's a big debate that using a keyword in the domain name will actually get you ranked higher. That actually worked back in the day. Sometimes it still works today. And there's really no right or wrong answer. Literally, at the end of the day, we don't know. Nobody knows what Google wants. In fact, uh, what we found now is that there, there's so many exact match domains and so many people that are using keywords in their domain names that it actually might help and it might not. And that's why you need to make sure that you don't look at one element, but you look at the whole website as a whole. So yeah, that was quite popular maybe five years ago, something like this, yourkeyword.com. So maybe scuba diving masks.com if you were trying to rank on scuba diving masks or best scuba diving masks or best survival kit.com. And that used to work and sometimes still does. So we can't really say for sure that if it doesn't or it does, we've noticed that it does, but we really can't say, but if you haven't noticed, Google really likes brands, they love brands. And the reason why they love brands is because that's because brands are here to stay. If you look at a brand, it becomes a culture and it becomes, it's got a following and that's why Google loves brands. Something like this, yourbrandname.com. Now Google is quite smart and has robots that know that people are trying to keyword stuff or game the system in terms of domain names or domains plus the URL structure. Now we've had success with brand names, so we lean towards that as a long-term view, but then again, exact match keyword domain names work well for some other people as well. So we can't say for sure that if, if it's not going to work. So at the end of the day, it's really up to you, but what I'm going to show you in just a minute will reveal to you why using a brand name will actually help you, especially in preventing you from creating 
duplicate or keyword stuffing in the URL structure. So the URL structure looks like this www.yourdomain.com slash category slash your dash page dash name. And that could be anything depending on how you go about naming that. And I'll show you that in WordPress, but we're just talking about the basic fundamentals right now. So let's say, for example, that you're trying to rank on red shoes. The problem with naming your domain name redshoes.com is this. Let's say, for example, that you have a category that is red shoes, blue shoes, yellow shoes, brown shoes. But that one category that's red shoes and you have a product called big red shoes, it ends up looking like this www.redshoes.com slash red dash shoes slash big dash red dash shoes. So you see what I mean here? You got red shoes, red shoes, and red shoes three times in a row. That's not a good sign because what that is is keyword stuffing. Now this isn't good because it looks like you're trying to game the system when in reality you might not be. But let's say for example that your brand name is super fast feet. And as silly as that sounds, that's something that just came to my mind and it'll make more sense. And the product name is big shoes. Now I know that's not great, but hold on. It would look something like this www.superfastfeet.com slash red dash shoes slash big dash shoes. So big shoes is a type of red shoes but it belongs to the brand name super fast feet or the e-commerce store or the digital store or the local store. So by doing that now you see red shoes only shows up once. Now by using a brand name, you have the potential of selling other things. If you just do red shoes.com you're, you're stuck with only red shoes, right? But with super fast feet, you could cover, shoes, you could cover slippers, you could cover socks, you could cover a variety of different things. You could even cover lifestyle of running, exercise, and all of that. So brands, not only does it help you with your URL structure, but it also helps you diversify and expand what your website could potentially be about. Now, in this case, the word shoes shows up twice, but that's okay. Do you see what I mean here and why brands actually help you avoid keyword stuffing? Now, another tip is to make sure that your URL is no longer than 90 characters long. Okay, so first things first, go ahead and log into your WordPress site, as you can see here. And then what you want to do is access the permalinks to make sure that your URL structure is search engine friendly. So what you need to do is to the left hand side, go to settings, permalinks, and then we'll get to here. Now at this point, you're going to want to choose post name, click post name, click save down here, and that's it. So what this is going to do is every time you create a post in a page, it's going to title the actual post and page and put it in the URL. You see, if you choose a numeric or if you choose anything like this, then when Google comes to your page, they're not necessarily going to know they're going to look for the body text, but the URL structure is, is by no means search engine friendly. So I can, as you can see here, the plain version is just question mark P equals one, two, three. As a human being as well, you don't really know what that is, right? So choose post name, click save. And that is the reason. Now, if you go on to a post or a page, so if you go to posts and choose a post or a page, this is what it's going to look like. So when you create a post and page, like for example, right here, this article here that says 10 different places to find credible freelancers online. If you have it here, you want to make sure that that is in your permalink. Permalink is the URL structure. So we click on edit here. We can see that it says 10 different places to find credible freelancers online. So what you want to do, is obviously we can't change the domain name, but we're going to put the title in here and you want to put dashes in between the words. And when you're done, click on okay, click update, and that's it. So that's 
as easy as it gets in terms of editing the URL structure. Now, of course, you can add them into categories. So if you're, you have a category, let's say in this case, we have freelancers, the category could be freelancing sites. And then you could have maybe 10 different posts on freelancing sites. So that as a human being, you know that we're looking at this and it's under the category of freelancing. And you can create categories by going under categories and click on add new category and creating that there. And then make sure that poster page is checked for that category, click update and you're good to go. And that's it. Hello and welcome back. This is video number five. And in this video, we're going to talk about the body text structure. Basically, what should you put in your content? And as you're writing your posts and your pages, how should you optimize it? So what you write on your blog post and page should be first and foremost, definitely human friendly. And then of course, secondly, search engine friendly. See, a lot of people make the mistakes of trying to game the system, trying to make it so search engine friendly that they totally forget about who they are writing to. Now, Google at the end of the day really cares about bounce rate and bounce rate, which we'll talk about later down the road is basically if somebody stays on your page for a long period of time, if they just come to your page and they leave immediately and Google sees that, that's not a good sign. In fact, if they go to Google and they type in, let's say for example, survival kit, and they go to your page and they don't like what they see. And then of course they go back to Google. Google knows that they just left your page and that's not a good sign. And that will actually hurt your ranking. So if you're merely right for the search engines, you're going to have to deal with the bounce rate, a high bounce rate, a low stick rate stick rate, meaning how long do they stay or how long do they stick around? And that will have a negative impact on you. So what that means is the longer someone stays on your website, the lower your bounce rate is. So if you keep that in your mind, the word bounce rate, the word stick rate, you will often see those words a lot when it comes to on page optimization or even search engine optimization in general. So to Google websites with a lower bounce rate must be good. The fact that people are staying on your page for a longer period of time tells them, okay, this website must be what people are searching for, right? And this is important to Google and other search engines as it also indirectly tells them that your site must have good content and then they're going to rank you higher. So that's just one of the many, many different factors that you're going to deal with. And that said, let's discuss some elements that you need to have in your body text. You definitely want to stick to one main keyword. And you want to have that main keyword definitely in the title of your page and throughout your page. So that keyword should be the same one in the URL structure for that post or your page. Now I'm going to show you in a minute, if we hop on over to WordPress, you can name it the title. And if everything is set up correctly, the permalink or the URL structure should have that keyword and that keyword should be spread about. Now, you definitely don't want to make it appear too many times, otherwise that will be seen as keyword stuffing. So it should appear, like I said, in the page, in headings one and two, which will be in the body text. And I'll give you an example later down the road when we show it to you live in action. And it should be somewhere in the first paragraph as well. It should be bold or italicized. Now, don't overdo it. There are actually ways to get around doing this and make it look natural. You got to remember you're writing first and foremost for the human being first. So when you, you put it in your text, you got to make sure that it is going to make sense to the human being. And you want to try to use variations of your keywords as well. So let's say, for example, let's use the example that we talked about earlier in the URL structure video, which was red shoes. 
So you want to try to use variations of the keyword or even synonyms. So Google at least is smart enough. They have this huge database of words that are related. So as far as the body text and the other factors, what I'm going to do is stick with the exact same post that we looked at in the previous video with the URL structure. So up at the top, if we say that our main keyword is maybe find credible freelancers or places to find, maybe that's our keyword, places to find credible freelancers, then what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's in the heading one and two. So we could take that and we could put it here and we could highlight that. And then under this drop box here, we want to do heading one. So that would be the heading. And then you want to make sure that it's heading two, but we can do that later. So you want to make sure that it is in the first paragraph. So it says, are you looking to outsource some of your work so that you can focus on your business better. Finding the right person can be difficult, but there are places online where you can search for credible freelancers. So places to find, we could say, so let's discuss places to find credible freelancers. So obviously the first letters are capitalized. So I wanna make sure that it's human friendly. So we say, so let's discuss places to find credible freelancers. And then you can highlight that. So places to find credible freelancers. So they, this can be italicized. This can be bolded like that. All right. So that needs to be in the first paragraph. You can also have it later down the road as a heading one. And if we scroll down, we don't have an image right now, but we'll talk about that later. We'll find an image and I'll show you how to add an alt tag. You want to do that. You want to go through and you want to create variations of this keyword. So places to find credible freelancers, fiverr.com. This is a good place to find great freelancers. So we use the word credible. You can mix it up and say good place to find great freelancers or hardworking freelancers. So what I'm saying here is you don't necessarily have to use that exact match keyword, but you're using variations so that Google knows that you're not trying to game the system and you're not trying to keyword stuff. But at the same time that it's a variation or it's a similar synonym or word so that it appears more natural. So we can go through here. We can do other things as well. That's pretty much the basics of it. But another thing you can do is tags as well. So you can add tags. Let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome to video number six. And we're going to talk about image optimization or in other words, how to make your images more search engine friendly. You see, when it comes to images, you need to tell the search engines what the images are. They're not really going to know off the bat what the images are. Now, there are ways that Google can figure out what the images are, which we'll talk about in just a second. Now, while Google and other search engines will one day be smart enough to be able to figure out what images are, right now you need to help them out just a little bit, get them a kickstart that they need. So you're going to need to take your main keyword or variations of the main keyword or even specific keywords based on the main keyword and insert them into the alt tags in your images. If you don't know what those are right now, don't worry about it. We're going to show you in just a minute. Now, what I recommend that you do is let's say, for example, that you have three images on your page. In fact, the more images, the better. You don't want to get too much, but the more images, the better. And what I recommend is the first image that you have, you're going to want to put the main keyword in there. Now make sure that it actually relates to the image itself. So if the image is a image of a shoe, you definitely don't want to put like something like a peanut butter sandwich or something. So you definitely want to put something that's related, right? Now the second keyword, you 
you don't want to put the same keyword. You want to put a variation of that keyword or based on what we talked about earlier, having the main keyword and then of course having keywords related to that keyword, you can put those in the other images, but you have enough where Google looks at it and thinks, okay, all these images are related. Now there are other ways that Google can figure out if those are legit. In fact, what they'll do is they'll index them into the Google image search engine. So whenever somebody searches for that image and they click on that image, they will think, okay, those images on your page are definitely legit. So we're going to rank you higher, right? So that is why making sure that your keywords and your images fit and they're accurate enough, but you don't want to overdo it in any other area, but one or two should be good. Three or four should be fine. Uh, but you definitely don't want to overdo it. Now, like I said, more images with variations of the keyword are even better. So if, if we are focusing specifically on red shoes as the post, maybe the specific brand name of shoes, you might want to put the brand name. You want, might want to put like the brand name plus red shoes. You might want to put shoes red or red, something that's a synonym of shoes. So to make more sense, let me show you what you need to do. And I'll give you some more tips along the way. Okay. So adding images and making them search engine friendly is actually very easy to do. But first things first, you'll need to find an image if you don't already have one. So starting where we left off in the previous video, we don't have any images here, but let's just go ahead and add one. So I'm going to add one somewhere in the beginning. So we could add an image let's say here. Now I want to say we do have an image like a featured image down here, but what we're talking about are images within the actual body text. So let's go ahead and click on add media here. And these are our existing images right here, but we can also upload a file here as well. So let's try to find something that relates to freelancers. So let's, let's do that here. Let's click that. So right here, it says title, caption, alt text, and description. Now by default, as you can see here with an image, it shows something like code. It doesn't look natural. It doesn't tell a human being what it is, and it doesn't tell Google what it is. Now, beyond just some basic optimization, you have to realize that if somebody is disabled and somebody can is listening to some sort of software that speaks out loud what the images are on the page, then this is actually going to help you reach those people. So keep that in mind as well. And by making it friendly to all sorts of people, you'll get an extra vote with Google in that sense as well. So let's say for example, that this is something to do with places to find credible freelancers. So all you need to do is simply put that in the alt text. Now for the title, you want to do something similar. You can do top 10 places to find credible freelancers. Now bear in mind that these images might show up in the Google image search engine. And if they do, this information will show up. So if somebody is utilizing the image search engine, which a lot of people do, then they're going to see that. And if your competitors are merely just uploading the images and they're not optimizing it for the alt tags and the titles and the descriptions and all that, you're going to be one step ahead. All right. So caption can be this image shows a screenshot of the top 10. So we could do a variation of 10. So 10 as in T E N places to find great freelancers. So you want to mix and match and keep it different so that it doesn't look like your keyword stuffing. And then of course you can put the description here. So when you're ready, click on insert into post and there we go. Now you can always edit that later. If you click on the image here and click on edit, you can always edit the alternative text. 
So, so the alt text, you definitely want that keyword in there. You could put the keyword in here in the captions as well if you want to. So we're going to click on X because I didn't do any updates. And of course, you can add other images as well throughout the page. But make sure, first and foremost, it is human friendly. And then based on that, you can create variations of the keyword. And of course, when you're ready, go ahead and click update. Hello and welcome to video number seven. Let's jump right in. So we're going to talk about title optimization. So this is extremely important because it's often the first thing that people will see as they are searching the internet. So if you imagine you go to google.com and you type in a keyword, whatever that is, and you're going to see the titles and then you're going to see the descriptions of each and every single website or with YouTube, you're going to see the titles, the descriptions, and of course the image. So based on the media in general, they're all going to have titles. So having the right titles is important. So like I said, this is really ex extremely important because that's the first thing that they're going to see. And you're, you're going to want to make sure that you're ranking on the keyword that is in the, the title. And then of course, when they get to the page, you want to make sure that the content fits the title. So you want to be congruent all the way. The more that, that you're congruent, they're going to get what they typed in. They're going to trust you. And then they're likely to take action if that is the case. So this needs to be set for all of your posts or your pages. And you really need to think clearly and carefully about this. Because we have seen in, in a lot of cases where people just name it, whatever comes to their, their mind. And what ends up happening is you work so hard to create the content and you attract the wrong person and they come to your post or page and you wonder why nobody is taking action, right? So this is the exact same keyword. And to make it easier for you to be congruent, if you take the keyword, that's in your URL structure, that's in your title. Make sure that it's in your title somewhere because that's what your viewers are searching for. Now, sometimes people will put the keyword straight up in the beginning and they'll put the keyword dash whatever. But what I recommend that you do is put the keyword in the title, but you wanna make sure that it sounds right. It's gotta be human friendly first. And then of course, secondary, search engine friendly second because at the end of the day and the, w the way Google is moving towards long term wise is towards engagement, more social engagement, people engagement. That is what is important to them because at the end of the day, if you think about it, their goal is for people to search, find what they want. So they want to make sure that they connect you to the right person. And all they really care about is they don't really care about you. They care more about the, the customer who is the person who is searching, right? So as long as you're on the top 10 of the Google search engine for that keyword, and that keyword is appearing in the title, it's highly likely that the prospect will click through your website. Now, as, as basic as this sounds, I want to make sure that you understand that it's important. Most of your competitors are not really going to do this. And if they are, they're going to miss something along the way, right? What we've seen over the years is uh, sometimes they'll have the title, right? They'll have the URL structure, right? But when people go to the content, it just doesn't make sense. So as long as you're congruent from the keyword to the title, to the poster page, to the content itself, to the call to action, to the product, everything is congruent from that point in the beginning to the end, you're most likely going to gain the trust of the prospect and you're most likely going to get the conversion. That's the most important thing. So as long as your poster pages are related, you're most likely going to see a higher conversion rate across the board, like I said earlier. Now, as a rule of thumb, your title should be no more than 75 characters long. You don't want it to be too long because psychologically that will actually overwhelm whoever is typing things in. And most people are just scanning. They're not reading. They're, they're looking for what they're looking for really quick. 
So if you have something short, straight to the point, you're most likely going to win as long as it's optimized and it's correct to that keyword. So now that we've talked about the fundamentals, let me go ahead and show you what you need to do to set this up properly. So we already briefly talked about the title, but this is your title, right? So a lot of times, let's say, for example, that the keyword is places to find credible freelancers. Sometimes you'll find people do something like this, places to find credible freelancers. And then, of course, they'll put the keyword first and then they'll put a sentence. You can do that if you want to. There's no proof that it doesn't work. It works or anything like that. But you definitely want to make sure that it is human friendly first and foremost. So in this case, ours is 10 different places to find credible freelancers online. Or we could do something like top 10 places to find credible freelancers. Now, whatever you do, if you change the title here, make sure that it's changed right here as well. So if we do that and we go back over here, we just copy that in, but we need to make sure that there are dashes in between the words. So what I'm doing right now is I'm simply adding dashes in between the words. So there we go. We click OK and that's it. So the title is crucial. Now I'll show you later down the road where you can use two WordPress plugins, which you can add more data like the metadata, the description data and all of that. But for now, by default, if you don't have those WordPress plugins, what the search engine will often do is they'll grab the title. So we'll click update and that's it. OK, so this is video number eight and we're going to dive straight in and talk about meta optimization. So this is the description that is going to show up on the search engines. So just like the title optimization video beforehand, this is what people are going to see in this search engine when they search the Internet for a specific keyword. So in other words, it's the description beneath the title and you're going to need to make sure that this is set up both in your posts and your pages. And this needs to be no more than 160 characters long. So let me show you what you need to do. OK, so we briefly talked about this before, but I'm just going to do a recap here. So we talked about the meta description being important. So for images, like I showed you with the image optimization, that's why the description is crucial, because if they're appearing in the image search engine, it will actually appear with that description and that title. Now, if you don't have a WordPress plugin that is installed, it's typically going to grab this as a title. And then the description usually is the beginning paragraph. So for congruency's sake, you want to make sure that that's why the keyword needs to be in the title, the first headline here in the description. And you usually want to try to put the keywords down here, but you don't want to put it too much. Sometimes it will look at the how many words you have compared to how many keywords that you have. If you have too many keywords, you're going to want to add more text. If you have more keywords, you definitely want to add more images as well. So the more images, the more text that aren't really that specific keyword, the better. So by default, like I said, it's going to grab this as a description. But then as you have the WordPress plugins that we'll talk about later, you'll have the opportunity to add more metadata, which I'll show you later on. But this is sort of a video that's sort of a preliminary to discuss why the metadata is actually still used. Hello and welcome to video number nine and congratulations. First and foremost, you've reached the end of this video course. And this is kind of a bonus because we talked about how to manually optimize your WordPress site. Now we're going to talk about how to automate the process. Now, the reason why I didn't jump straight into this was simply because you need to understand why things are important, what elements you need to have on your pages to make it important because yeah, you can use this system to automate it. But the, the two plugins that I'm going to talk about, some of them will actually automate certain processes like the URL structure, but at the same time, knowing how things work 
and why th certain things are important is more important at the end of the day because you're going to understand how to implement these factors. So now let's talk about the two plugins. With these two WordPress plugins, you can literally boost your on-page optimization on just their free levels. So they both have a free version and they both have a paid version. Now, two of these are very common. The first one you'll most likely maybe already be using it. The second one is not so popular, but they actually work hand in hand. So let me go ahead and show you these plugins and why they are both important. So the two plugins are first Yoast SEO, that's Y-O-A-S-T dot com. And if you go here, you can get a better idea of what it's all about. But this is one of the most popular SEO plugins, and this will actually help you optimize your site automatically. So now that you understand the basics, the title, the description on all of that, a lot of times what Yoast will do is if you just create a title and you put that in the title of the WordPress post or page, you click update, it'll automatically fill in the permalink or the URL structure. So, and it'll fill out other data as well as you begin to create your posts and your page. Now that's the free version. The paid version actually takes it one step further and does a lot more. Now I'm not gonna cover all that in this particular video because you can go here, you can check it out for yourself. Now, if you wanna figure out how to install it, it's very easy. All you have to do is, is go to your WordPress site here and go to add plugins under plugins, type in the word Yoast and you'll see it right here. The second plugin is called SEO Squirrely, as you can see here. So you can do a Google on this, but if you type in SEO Squirrely, that's S-E-O-S-Q-U-I-R-R-L-Y. And if you go here, then you can actually download the plugin and there's a free version, which is, in my opinion, we've tested it out and the free version is really, really good. And what SEO Squirrely focuses on is schema. And schema is necessary because that's the way of the future. And it tells search engines what your site is all about and, and more information than that. But the short answer is it just helps optimize your site in a much better way. And now when you go to SEO Squirrely, it'll say, you know, our plugin is better than Yoast. And then of course, Yoast, sometimes you might see an article out there. I haven't seen one, but I'm sure there's a comparison and you'll see that they're going against each other. But at the same time, you can either do Yoast or you can do SEO Squirrely. Now, the what we've found is SEO Squirrely focuses on schema, like I said, and schema is just a way to make your site appear in the search engines where people will click on your your link. So if you've seen, for example, the, the ratings, the five-star ratings that appear in the search engine, that is based on schema. And there's a lot of other different little elements where if you've got on your page like images and videos and all that, SEO Squirrely will automatically optimize those media types on your page. And we found that we've actually tested this one and Yoast together and they actually work hand in hand. Now they can run into each other based on like the title and the meta description and all that. And they can conflict in that realm. But at the end of the day, you kind of need to just pick and choose which one you want to go with and just go with one. So Yoast, I can tell you, will pretty much do everything that we talked about SEO Squirrely as well. It just, they typically are focused on different areas. So my take on that is just install them both and just see what happens and use them both and go from there. So whether you're trying to rank on a specific term in Google or other search engines, most businesses forget one crucial thing, which is on-page search engine optimization. That technical term simply means that you help 
the search engines know what your site is all about. Now, the reality is that most businesses forget this crucial piece of the puzzle and simply don't know why they're not getting traffic from Google. They think SEO is a big scam purely because of bad assumptions. So the big question is, how do you achieve this? Well, how do you appear on the right keywords that your prospects and potential customers are searching for? Well, Google and other search engines have become much smarter than ever. What that means is that they're constantly trying to figure out what your website is all about. That said, it still needs a little bit help to know what your website is all about. And that is the best way to get ranked on the right keywords so that you attract the right prospects, right? Now, most people forgo on-page search engine optimization and try to focus on external things like getting backlinks. Now, while backlinks does work, this is a big mistake because by not doing something as simple as on-page optimization and on-page SEO, you will lose out on some great initial rankings. So you're going to discover how to get better search engine rankings by making your WordPress website more SEO friendly starting today. Now, this has been working for the last decade and there's no theory here. And the fundamentals and the factors that we're going to be dealing with have changed slightly, but they still work. So here's a quick video's overview of, of what's inside this video course. Video number one is the introduction. We'll talk about the mindset that you need to be in before you even get started. We'll talk about the tools you need and we'll give you a quick overview. Video number two is the main focus to make sure that you're on the same page as us. Video number three, we'll talk about the five main important factors. And then we'll dive into the five factors in video number four, which will be the URL structure. Video number five will be body text structure. Video number six will be image optimization. Video number seven will be title optimization. Video number eight will be meta optimization. And then we'll talk about how you can automate this process by using the top two WordPress plugins that we have tested. So go ahead and grab this video course today and start making your WordPress site SEO friendly.